I believe it was the end of 1998, which at that time I was 28. And I had met Jesus when I was 26, had a very radical conversion, lived a very worldly life up to that point. But when I got saved, it was like a radical conversion, on fire, loved Jesus, wasn't dating, just like Jesus was my husband, it was all about him, but still thought in my future I would be married and have children. I was on a plane and I was I had I had my earbuds in and and I had a supernatural experience that I never had before and I have never had since. But what happened was the music literally faded out and all of a sudden there was this vision that was, it was blurry and it was in front of me and it's kind of like I was moving toward towards it and as I got closer it was becoming more clear and I saw that it was me and I was holding an infant and I was kind of dancing and you know, just I was looking down on her, just smiling, just doing this. Clear, clear as day, I heard the Lord say, this is your daughter, and her name is Christina. And then boom, I, the music came back on and the vision went away. And so since that moment, um, you know, that's all, he didn't give me any details. I just knew that I was gonna have a daughter, her name was Christina. So um, a couple months later, um, I bought her a book. Um, I started writing to her in it. It's, it's a Max Lucado book, and in the front, for years I have been writing to her. And so the first time I wrote in it was January 27th, 99. That said, to my long-awaited hope, my precious, my precious Christina, waiting for you, mommy. And then one all the way from, from January 29th, 2014. Ugh, it says, 15 years since, since God spoke to me about you. He gave me your name and showed me holding you. Mommy's 43 now, and I feel like Sarah when the Lord had promised her a son in her old age. I still don't understand why you're not here or when you're coming to me. Maybe you are already here, but God hasn't brought you to me yet. Please know that if yet another 15 years pass, I'll still be waiting for you and loving you, longing for you, precious one. I miss you. Kelly and I met a couple years after she moved to Atlanta. We were actually at a business networking event and I asked her out and uh, she said no. Yeah. <laughs> so we became friends for like a long time. About a year, like we were hanging out a lot and going to church together and there, for one There of wasn't us. that interest on my part for a while. And so I kind of went before the Lord and was like, okay, Lord, like I'm open to this, but if, if this is my husband, you're going to have to give me those types of feelings for him because I can't just date someone, especially marry somebody just because he's a good guy and need to like fall in love with him. So long story short, you know, he did ask me out. I did say yes. And our first date was absolutely magical. So I knew James didn't want any more kids and he actually had been in a long-term relationship. And one of the reasons, like the main reason why they broke up was because she wanted kids and James has to. So he was, you know, been there, done it. And I don't want to. So on our very first date, and I basically said, if you marry me, you are going to have a daughter. So I don't know how she's coming, um, but I know she's promised to me. So you need to like accept that in your heart. If we progress and if it leads to marriage, you need to know you're having another child. And that was in October and we were engaged December 31st <laughs> and married in May. So it happened really, really fast once it happened. Yeah. This May, it'll be three years. So I was having dinner with my good friend, Deborah, And while we're having dinner, she gets a text message from her sister-in-law that says, Larry had a stroke. They can no longer adopt the baby. They asked if we would be, if we were interested, but we're not in a place to do so. And so she's reading this text message and she has this look on her face. I'm like, you know, is everything okay? And so she starts telling me the story. <clears throat> and as she's telling me the story, she refers to, you know, this girl and um, they already had a baby and the grandparents are raising it and she's about to have a girl and their their the, the great grandparents were going to adopt the baby but now they can't and when she referred to the baby as a girl I literally had that same feeling come over me that I had on the plane and I was like and I looked at her and I whispered I go she's having a girl and she's like yeah why and so I shared my story with Deborah she never had heard my story and she's like oh my gosh Kelly she's like what if this is Christina and I'm like and she's like, should I say something to my sister-in-law? And I'm like, well, let me, let me talk to James first. <laughs> so I shared with him 
what had happened and he's completely calm. I'm like, you're, you're like, you're okay with this? And he's like, Kelly, he's like, this has to be God. How can I not be okay if, it, if, if this is Christina, if this is like God's way, then of course I'm open to it. And so that was July 5th, right? And so um, the birth mom went into labor two weeks early and on July 24th, she gave birth. So the day she's born, the great grandma, her name's Sherry, she's sending me pictures of them cutting the umbilical cord, you know, I'm like all emotional, I'm getting all excited. The very next day, I get a message from Sherry that says, Kelly, I'm sorry. Melissa saw the baby and she can't let her go. I had this, it's crazy, because I had this, I don't know, it was all supernatural, because I had a, like this moment of like grief and sadness and like I don't understand, but I had a strong faith at that time, like, okay, I don't understand. Either this is gonna come back around or God still has Christina and this child isn't her. I, I don't know, I don't, I don't understand but I had this faith well up in me, like it's gonna be okay, God can be trusted. And so for three weeks, heard nothing. And you know, a so, so few people were like, I don't think this is over. And I'm like, I don't know, maybe it's not, but I have to just surrender to God. I can't, I can't put my hope in this child, my hope is in Jesus. So I just really, I just leaned in hard to him. And those three weeks where I heard nothing, I was okay. I was, it was pretty crazy how okay I was. And then I get a text message from Sherry that says, are you free to talk? Um, and of course, I'm like, I'm at work. And I'm like, I picked up my phone, I ran into the hallway and I called her and she said, Kelly, Melissa called me last night and said, mom, call that couple. I want them to adopt the baby. And so Sherry said, we'd like you to come to the hospital tonight and meet her. So she was three weeks old and I'm driving to Children's Hospital and I'm calm until I get in the parking garage. And then all of a sudden, man, my heart is like, and I'm about to get out of the car and I heard in my head, you're about to go meet your daughter. And I just like, just started losing it in the car and I'm like, oh my gosh, Kelly, get yourself together. Get yourself together. I couldn't even sign my name. I'm like trying to sign my name in. And you know, Jerry walked me back and walks me back into the room. And then back in the corner was this crib and I just saw this little tiny body back there. And I, I said, you know, is that her? And she said, yeah, go ahead. And I walked back there and Oh, I just, I saw her and I knew, I just, I knew that, I knew that was my daughter. We met her at three weeks, we brought her home at two months, and then we adopted her at 13 months. It was hard waiting, you know, but I guess I, you know, my heart is to encourage people because, you know, I didn't get married till I was 46, but I, it just, my heart is for young, single women that have the desire to be married, that have the desire to have children, you know, first and foremost, our, our hearts and our longing should be Jesus. Just love Jesus, know Jesus, follow Jesus, fall in love with Jesus, be with Jesus. And at his time, he will bring those things. And what I truly believe is at the end of the day, what God promises us the most is himself. And really, that's where I left it with the Lord. Like, Lord, more than anything, I just want you. I do believe that you promised me, Christina, but I will praise you and I will walk with you all the days of my life. If she doesn't come, I won't understand, but I will walk with you all the days of my life and I'll trust you, you know, and he can be trusted even when you're waiting a long time. So she was worth waiting 20 years for, and I'd wait another 20 if I had to for her.